Hello, nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is Renaissance Nerd, the show where we get nerdy about food and other things eventually, but right now it's just food. Uh, this month we're doing our homage to Dr. Seuss, and in this video we are doing the prep for our roast beast, which should be pretty simple, so not a whole lot of slicing and dicing like, like last month. First thing, we need to get our ingredients together. There's our beef to roast. You can get any uh, ribeye. We have a ri uh, bone-in ribeye. Salt, garlic. Those herbs are thyme. You can use any kind of rosemary. Thyme and rosemary is kind of optional. And then pepper. And that's what we're going to need. There's not a whole lot of prep for the roast beast. Uh, really... The most prep is going to be getting the meat ready to go right into that oven. So we're gonna need we're gonna need our, our ingredients that we just went over. We're also uh, that's it. We're gonna need a roasting pan, and yeah, we'll use some of those drippings to make the gravy. But yeah, that's that's pretty simple. First things first. For that, we need to mince up some garlic. This is the most tricky part about this prep. So the most tricky part about this is going to be this dang garlic. Uh, the garlic is, preferably I get a whole, you can get it already minced, which will save you all of this hassle, but uh, I prefer to do it myself just because you don't know how old that garlic is in those pre-minced cans or jars or whatever. Uh, so yeah, it's, this, is, this is the process of peeling it. Uh, peeling it is a little time consuming, consuming considering you only get so many uh, cloves out of it. And then the best way, once you get it to this point, the best thing to do, and this will actually help you with your uh, with the the mincing and the the dicing of it, is you just take it and you smash it with the side of your blade. Be very very careful to keep the edge. Uh, be aware of the edge, I guess, at all times. I like to point it away from me just because it feels safer that way. I don't think it necessarily is much safer that way, but because I generally push my hand away when I smash, I would rather push my hand into the dull side of the knife than the sharp side of the knife is why I do it that way. Smashing this, again, like I said, helps you with the peeling process as well because uh, that last little layer of skin is really really difficult to get off if you're just doing it by hand but if you smash it with that last layer of skin then that then it peels off uh, much much easier another thing you should probably notice is that I'm only doing one clove at a time one or two cloves at a time uh, the best practice for this is about one or two cloves at a time, unless you have some really small ones and you can go above two, but it, it becomes exponentially much more difficult to smash when you have more than two decent sized cloves. And then once they're smashed, just like we did with the Brunois or the, uh, the Batonet last month, we're going to chop up the... It, should, it makes things a lot easier. If you still have some large-ish chunks then you might want to uh, cut them down to size just a little bit more so you get a little bit more of an even dice. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just turning those smashed pieces into diced pieces. Really nothing super crazy about it. Just be sure you are curling your fingers away from that blade because nobody wants to cut their fingertips. And now, the roast. This, again, is going to be super simple. The herbs are optional. Uh, you can really just do this with garlic, salt, and pepper. Um, in the video, I didn't add the herbs because they are optional, but if you notice in the next video, you can see the herbs are on the roast because I do like some rosemary and thyme on my steak. 
So what we're doing here is we're just scoring the fat. You want to make sure when you get your cut that there is as much of a fat cap as you can. Uh, I usually get mine uh, right before they uh, are out of date so that I can get a little bit of a discount and then I can just freeze it and cook it whenever. Um, usually, again, freezing is going to preserve only for so long. So usually within a couple of weeks of buying it, we, we cook it. But we're just scoring you don't want to go too too far in uh, beyond the fat you do want to get into the fat though so that it holds the uh, salt pepper and herbs but you're just doing a bit of a score so again so that it holds those salt the salt pepper herbs and garlic And then rub that bad boy down. Uh, so this is a matter of preference. I like to do the garlic directly on first and then season over the top of the garlic just because it, it, it emboldens the garlic flavor. Uh, something else you can do with your garlic if you want to even increase beyond that is let it steep in some olive oil for a couple of hours and then rub it on. That's really what the pre-diced uh, stuff, the pre-minced stuff that you get from the store does is it's just that minced garlic that we did and then they roast it briefly in some olive oil and that's what preserves it so that it's shelf stable and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, be very, very careful though because garlic in oil creates an anaerobic environment and then it starts to grow botulism, so only let it... Uh, soak in the oil briefly or do it in the fridge or cook it while uh, to, to maximize the flavor. And that, nerds, is your prep video for the roast beast. Told you it was going to be pretty quick. It was a, it's a pretty simple one. Most of the prep went into the side dishes last week, so not a whole lot left for prep work, just getting that meat ready, which if you did it right, and you'll know you did it right because it tastes fantastic, then yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely, if you are new to the channel, click that subscribe button. If you like this episode, click that thumbs up, click the like button. If you want to support the channel, if you want to get deeper into the conversation, see some of the other stuff that's going on with Generally Nerdy, there is a website, generallynerdy.net is where you can do all of that. All of the social media links are up on the website. All of the store links are up on the website so you can get yourself some nerdy swag. Uh, so much stuff going on up at up on the website generallynerdy.net again is the place to do that if you want to support the channel a little more directly then there is a patreon page as well patreon.com slash generally nerdy that's the place you can go all of it is broken down over there so check that out patreon.com slash generally nerdy but before we go do any of this stuff before we click on buttons because there should be buttons like here ish before we do any of these things we need to always always remember that if it's generally nerdy it's probably here and we're gonna make some amazing food <laughs>